one more time. Um, okay, so like I said, I'm going to follow Rev Bazak's analysis here, um, but mostly it's playing out a Ramban. So there's a stira in our parsha. As we know, in Hurriot, we've been dealing with the Kohen Gadol. What is the Kohen Gadol referred to? Um, how is he referred to in Maset Hurriot? By the Mashiach. The Mashiach, very good. So there's an interesting question, which is, is in fact the Kohen Gadol the only one who is the Kohen HaMashiach? Um, right, that would seem to be an important question. If we're going to define him as the Kohen HaMashiach, um, it would be quite problematic. Yes, if we just started, because I messed up the links. Um, it, would be, it would be quite problematic if, in fact, the other Kohenim were also anointed. Um, because then he would not be the Kohen HaMashiach. He'd be a Kohen who happens to be Mashiach, just like everybody else. right? Um, but there is a stira. Um, because in this week's parasha, indeed, it sounds like the way you would think if you were just reading Hurio. The Pasuk says, Vayitzok Mishemana Mishcha al Rosh Aharon, Vayimshach Oto Likadasho, Vayakrev Moshe Bene Aaron, Vayal Bishem Kutanot. That um, <clears throat> he poured oil on the head of Aaron and he anointed him to sanctify him. Um, and Moshe brought Aaron and he brought his clothes. Um, and this is also how it's presented in Tetzaveh. Where the in Mot Perak Chavtet Pasuk Zayin and Ched it says V'lach Kachta Et Shemana Mishcha V'yatzakta Al Rosho Umashachta Oto that you'll take the oil of anointing you'll put it on his head you'll anoint him that Vanav Takrid V'yol Bashtam Kutanot and his sons you'll put clothes on which sounds like the Kohen Gadol is the Kohen Hamashiach the anointed one and all the other Kohenim are just Kohenim who wear clothing. Who wear special clothing? They're not nimshach. That's great, except if you look in <coughs> Shmot Periklamid, it says something different, which is ve'ed aharon ve'ed banav timshach v'kidashtam otam lechayin le. Aaron and his children you shall anoint, and they will be my kohanim. <coughs> and in Pekude, you get the same thing. V'hil bashtam in aharon ve'ed begdei. You'll dress Aaron and his children in the holy clothing and you'll anoint him. And the next passage is And then the children, you'll give them their clothing and you will anoint them. As you anointed their father. And they will be my kohanim. And their anointing will be forever. For kuna forever. So which is it? You got two psukim, one in Sav and one in Tetzava that say only our own is anointed. And you got one in Pekude, um, which is quite clear. You got a few psukim in Pekude that are quite clear <coughs> that all the sons of Aaron, all Kohanim are anointed, which would again call into question this formulation we have in Horiot that the Kohen Gadol is the Kohen HaMashiach. So the Ramban in Sav notes this contradiction. Um, and he suggests the following. He says maybe there's two ways in which you anoint. The Kohen Gadol, you put it you know, on his head, on his body. The regular Kohanim it's different. And he points out that later on in Sav, in Perchet Pasuk Lamed, the Pasuk says, V'ikach Moshe mishem ena mishchom ena dam ha'shal mezbech la'yaz al aharon al begadav v'al banav al begdei banav ito v'ikadesh al aharon et begadav v'et banav v'et begdei banav ito. That you put the shem ena and the blood on Aaron and on their clothing. And what the Ramban suggests is that Aaron is the only one who's anointed on his body, on his head, um, or on his head, really. The others, they get it on their body. I, I should be careful. On their body and on their clothing, um, and the blood from them is Bayah, but not this special anointing on their head. So what's the difference? And so what's the difference? And here is where I pick up from Rav Bazak. And I think this, the reason I wanted to say this is because I think it fits very much 
the lamdus that we've been saying throughout the Mazechta, is he suggests the following. The oil that's mixed with the blood of the Mizbeach, that's put on the body of the Kohanim, that indicates that fundamentally, where does their Kedusha come from? From the fact that they're involved in the Avodah. And that's why you mix their Shevan Amishcha with the Dam on the Mizbeach to typify the fact that their Kedusha stems from their role. And Rav Bazak points to the Pasuk in Emor that says, Kedoshim yu Eloheim, v'lo yichalu sheim Eloheim, ki et sheim Adonai lechem Eloheim hei makrivim v'hayu kodesh. Why are they kodesh? Because they are makriv, because they bring the lechem of Hashem. But Aaron, you put it on his head, because the Kohen Gadol seems to have an added personal status that isn't related to the fact that he's Ovid as much as the fact that he has a status called being the Kohen Gadol. And he points out that this is Matim, the Pasuk, about the Kohen Gadol in Emor, which says, V'lo yichalel et mikdash Elohav. He shouldn't desecrate the Mikdash. And it doesn't say because he's Makrev, because he brings the bread of God. It just says, Ki nezer shemen mishchat Elohav alav. Because the crown of the oil is on his head. Which points to the fact that his status of being the Kohen Gadol is uh, unique. Um, and then Rav Bazak notes that this notion that maybe the Kohanim, their unique status comes by virtue of the fact that they're Ovid in the Beit HaMikdash. But the Kohen Gadol has, his, has a personal status of transformation, has halachic ramifications. And I would say that the number one for our purposes is the power of the Kohen Mashiach, the fact that he has a different status for his sins. And as we saw, the Kohen Gadol is unique because if you want to think of a good lumdish proof for this Hashkafic idea of Rav Bazak, what would be the best proof from the sugyos that we've seen in the last few days? That the Kohen Gadol maintains his status even after he's fired or retired as Kohen Gadol, meaning it's dafka independent of the fact that he's Oved. And that's why he still brings this unique carbon, even when he's not the co- working as the going bundle anymore. And I think that very much proves this notion that, yes, the regular Kohanim are also mashuach, but they're mashuach because they work and in, in order to enable them to work and their kedusha is wrapped, wrapped up in their service, as opposed to the going gadol, where we see it as a status change, that he represents something fundamentally. And that's why even after he's fired, even if they're you know, even after he retires, whatever, he maintains that status, and that's why he still brings the carbon Kohen HaMashiach that we uh, saw. Um, and I noted that some of the other Nafkaminas, the Halachar, that even the Kohen Gadol after he retires, if he dies, he makes the people who murdered by accident go back from the Ermiklad, which points to the fact that he maintains the status of a Kohen Gadol long after he's over, even when there's another Kohen Gadol doing the job. It doesn't matter. The status of the Kohen Gadol becomes inherent. He represents God. He represents the Beis HaMikdash, even when he's not Ovid. So I thought that that was an important point to uh, to raise since, well, as I said, we've been talking about the Kohen Mashiach over and over again. We should talk about what it means that he's the Kohen Mashiach when really all Kohanim are in a certain sense Nimshach. And I think this Ramban and its development by Rav Bazak really helps us understand uh, the Sugya in that direction. Okay, so I'm